how you can help family. We're back. We're still outside at this great park. Like I said, it was near a doctor's appointment and I thought this would be a pretty good place to read. So today we're in the Old Testament. We're on uh, 2 Samuel and we're reading chapter 9. My name is Sheena. Thanks for joining me if this is your first time to the channel. If you get through the whole chapter, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and then every time I read, we'll be together you'll be reading right along with me. Alrighty. So 2 Samuel chapter 9, David's righteous rule over Methbosheth. One day, David began wondering if anyone in Saul's family was still alive, for he had promised Jonathan that he would show kindness to them. Okay, so now we're getting back to the good stuff, right? Chapter 8 was a lot. So he summoned a man named Ziba who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba, the king asked? Yes, sir, I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them in any way I can. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive, but he is crippled. Where is he, the king asked, in Lodabar. Ziba told him, at the home of Machir, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Machir's home. His name was Methbosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low in great fear and said, I am your servant. Oh, this is getting good. But David said, don't be afraid. I've asked you to come so that I can be kind to you because of my vow to your father, Jonathan. Now, I think I remember someone had dropped this um, little boy in a couple chapters back. Do you guys remember that? So David was saying, um, don't be afraid. I've asked you to come so that I can be kind to you because of my vow to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the land that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you may live here with me at the palace. Wow. Mephasheth fell to the ground before the king. Should the king show kindness to a dead dog like me, he exclaimed. Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for his family. But Mephasheth will live here at the palace with me. Ziba, who had 15 sons, oh my God, and 20 servants replied, yes, my Lord, I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly with David as though he were one of his own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and from then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who had who was crippled in both feet, moved to Jerusalem to live at the palace. Well, David definitely kept his word to Jonathan. My goodness. That's amazing. And it says here that Methuselah had sons. And then it, I'm reading in verse 13, he was crippled in both feet, but that did not stop him from having children. <laughs> so, hey, listen. <laughs> I don't know why I said that out loud. You guys have to forgive me. Oh my goodness. But that, that chapter was kind of interesting because I liked how how David remembered, you know, in the very first verse. I'm wondering, he's wondering if anyone's still alive. So he's still thinking about Jonathan, his BFF. So that's really nice. That's really good. Um, it says for the commentary for verses 1 through 13 of this chapter, Instead of destroying the last helpless rep representative of Saul's family, David honored him and thus honored his covenant with Jonathan. Mephibosheth was five years old when his father was killed. He now had a young son of his own, which indicates that this event took place about midway in David's reign. So really good chapter, really good chapter. We will be back tomorrow. And just remember, I think the word that's coming to me is loyalty. You know, if you have people in your life um, that are close to you, remain loyal to them and remain honest, 
keep lines of communication open. And, um, you know, uh, what's, what am I looking for to say? Um, keep your word, right? Just keep your word to people that you've um, made promises to throughout your life. I know that. I grew up and I didn't grow up with my dad. And sometimes, you know, here I am sitting here 51. And sometimes I remember he'd say he'd come to pick us up and he didn't come. Or we could do this and it didn't happen. So it was just little stuff like that. So if you have people in your life that you love and are close to you, be loyal to them, keep your word to them, be honest with them, keep communication open, and, and don't forget, don't forget about some people, um, you know, because everybody needs to be, wants to be acknowledged or heard or not forgotten, right? It feels good when people recognize you and remember you and honor you, so that's what I have to say about that. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with chapter 10 and my name's Sheena again if you made it to the end like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't and always remember that true healing begins with self-love why because God is love and he lives on the inside of you I mean just look at all the green behind me and the sky and everything that we see belongs to the Lord everything he created so let's let's honor him and let's be loyal to Jesus today if you're reading the word you're saying you're a believer. Let's be loyal to God. Honor him in all that we do and say today. Amen. All right. We'll talk soon. Love you guys. Bye.